Hello! Well, Wednesday soon comes around, doesn't it? Well, here, here we are. It's episode three of James Higgins' World of Strange Powers. Uh, episode three. So, let's get to it. Uh, just one second, and we'll get to it. Right, well, this is a parallel universe story uh, here on James Higgins' World of Strange Powers, episode three. So, let's get started. Just one second, and we'll get to it. Just one second. Do parallel universes really exist? While still a theory, it is found backing from renowned physicist Stephen Hawking. So if, for a minute, we assume they do exist, then the argument of alternate realities existing does follow. In fact, the two terms are often even used interchangeably. Now, this alternate reality may have a different version of you, the other you may look the same, but can have a different set of aspirations. The possibilities are endless. The possibilities are endless, aren't they? You know what I mean? Uh, there could be countless versions of all of us in parallel universes. Uh, so let's get to the first story about a parallel universe. One second. Right, here we are. This is an interesting story. Get ready. One second. Just one second. Just one second. One second. Right, this is a famous story. Uh, this one. Uh, I've read it on the last one, but this is, I'm going to let this, the machine read it for you. Uh, this lady read it for you. So, here we go. One second. Towerhead mystery. The man who vanished as mysteriously as he came. Wow. Just one second. The man said that his country has been in existence for 1,000 years and was a little puzzled why his country was called Andorra on the map. Wow. Wow. One second. Right. Here we go. One second. New Delhi. It was July 1954 when a smartly dressed man arrives at Haneda Airport in Tokyo, Japan. Much like other passengers, he makes his way to customs. But whatever happened from this point onwards have left all puzzled and concerned. When questioned by the customs officers, the mysterious passenger said he was from Tau Red, also referred to as Tau Red Mystery. The mystery man claimed that it was the third time he was visiting Japan from his country. But, to the surprise of officers, they couldn't find any country named Taurid. The primary language of the man, described as Caucasian looking with a beard, was French. However, she would... One second. There we go. However, she was purportedly speaking Japanese and many other languages as well. Wow, one second. One second. Officers were perplexed because they had never heard about any such country. The passport of the man was issued by, of course, the Towerhead. The passport looked authentic, but the place was not recognized. Oh, yeah. One second. Location of Towerhead. Just one second. Such booking was made. This pro 
prompted officers to take the man in custody for further interrogation. Officers were suspicious that he might be some criminal and confiscated his documents and personal belongings. The officers put the mystery man in a nearby hotel whilst they conducted their investigation. Wow! Just wait one second. Just one second. Mystery man vanishes amid tight security. To ensure that the mystery man didn't escape, two guards were placed on the door. It must be mentioned that the hotel room in which he was staying only had one entry and exit point. But to everyone's surprise, the man vanished the next morning. Not only that, but all his personal documents had also disappeared. A search was launched to find the man, but in vain. The thing that was troubling investigating officers was that he was put up in a room high up in the multi-story hotel building with no balcony. Wow! That's my favourite story of, uh, one of my favourite stories of, uh, Hello, Mr. Uh, really. <coughs> uh, the man from Torrid. Torrid. Yeah, so sort of interesting story that one, isn't it? Hey, very interesting story. You know, really is that one. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, stay, uh, won't be a second, I'll be back with the next story here on James Higgins' World of Strange Powers, episode three. Stay tuned. Right, here's, a uh, here's some, uh, uh, ghost story from the Tower of London. Here we go. Uh, just one second. Just one second. Here we go. In 1483, the two young princes were infamously murdered in the tower, with their murder remaining unsolved to this day. The shadowy figures of two lost little boys, holding hands, are a relatively common sight in the White Tower, as they drift between rooms and melt into the walls. Wow! What the hell? Right, just one second. Right. Many other tales of Tower of London ghosts involve and Bullen, and was, of course, imprisoned in the tower and beheaded in 1536. The ghost of it has been spotted in many different parts of the Tower of London, both roaming the inside of the buildings and outside upon the Tower Green. Wow! Hey! Wow! One second. Here's the rest of the story. One second. It's said that her headless torso paces through the tower at night and is most frequently spotted in the chapel of St. Peter, where she was buried following her execution. Wow! Unbelievable! It's some more to this story. Wow! In 1864, it's recorded that a soldier guarding the tower saw the terrifying, headless figure of and panicked and tried to stab it with his bayonet. The dagger, of course, went straight through her ghostly figure. The soldier fainted from fright and was about to be court-martialed for being asleep on duty. Wow! Unbelievable, eh? That is the last bit to this story. Wait till you hear this. However, many other guards came forward and claimed they'd also seen the ghost of and whilst on night duty. As a result, the soldier was let off. Wow! Hey, wow! One second. Wow! Wow, hey, one night's uh a good a good story, eh? Some ghosts in the town of London, I'm telling you. Wow. Just one second and we'll get to the next story. Wow. Welcome back. Right, here's another story. Wait till you hear this one. Wait till you hear this one. Right, here we go. One second. Penrith, Cumbria. Angela reported a strange experience as she walked on a steep path between pine trees up to the top of Beacon Hill that overlooks Penrith. At the time, she was a teenager. Angela would often climb the beacon when she wasn't at school, and it's still a popular local walk. Wow! Just one second. Here we go. Here we are. <clears throat> one one hot day in August in the mid-1970s, Angela and a friend set out onto the footpath from Beacon Edge. The walk takes about 15 minutes, and the path has many abrupt angles as it zigzags through the trees. The trees crowd thickly round the track as it climbs over craggy sandstone outcrops. Soon you feel quite apart from 
the everyday world. It's an odd feeling, and you can have the impression that someone is watching you from the woods on either side. You go up and up, changing direction, and losing sight of the path below and behind you. Wow, one second and we'll continue this story. Wait there, just one second. Just one second. Right, here we go. As Angela and her friend climbed that day, they chatted away, but Angela reports <clears throat> how the atmosphere grew increasingly heavy, as if there was thunder in the air. They'd walked up many times and weren't taking much notice of their surroundings until they turned a corner and stopped. They both saw it, an old-fashioned cottage, roughly made of stone. Wow! Just one second. Right, here's the last part of it. Wow! Angela says that it was like a dwelling from the Middle Ages. The trouble was there had never been a cottage there before. Smoke was coming from the chimney, so someone was at home. Angela says that there was a very uncanny feeling about the place. She looked at her friend and, as the door began to open, they both fled. When she worked up the courage to climb the hill some months later, the cottage wasn't there. Her friend would never talk about the experience. As you would imagine, in the years since, I've taken one or two walks up that path, in the snow and the sun, but I've never had the slightest inkling of a time anomaly. Wow! Hey, wow! Hey, this, this channel will get better and better all the time. James Higgins, World of Strange Powers, Episode 3 just gets better and better. Wow! One second. Right, here's another story. Check it out. Wales. Over the next few years, I taught an evening class on ghosts and legends for adults. I told the story of Angela Charlton and one man, Roger, who I happened to know from outside the class, told me his tale. <clears throat> Roger said that he and his family had visited Pembroke Castle in Wales. They were climbing the tower, and he was a flight or two above his family. When he reached the top of the castle tower, he glanced out over the river and saw it was full of medieval boats. He thought there must be some kind of festival on, but when he remarked on it, not only had his family not noticed it, but when they went out to look at the river, there were no boats. Roger had no explanation for this and didn't make a big deal of it. He probably wouldn't have mentioned it at all if I hadn't told him the story about the girls climbing the hill in Penrith. Wow! Hey! Wow! Believe me, it? Hey! Wow! Just gets better and better, doesn't it, this, this uh, channel? James Higgins Open World and... James Higgins, World of Strange Powers, episode 3. Wow! Keep listening. Wow! Let's have one more story and that's it for this uh, episode of James Higgins, World of Strange Powers, episode 3. Wow! It comes out every Wednesday. Hey, keep listening. Wow! <clears throat> Welcome back. Here we go. It's the next story. Listen to this. Far from it, there is a story of Alice Pollock, 1868 to 1971, who visited Leeds Castle in Kent. Pollock was born into the minor aristocracy, and this may have allowed her entry to Leeds Castle in a time when it was not generally open to the public. Leeds Castle is a famous and picturesque castle not far from London. Alice Pollock was psychic, and she was trying out some psychometry in Henry VIII's old room. Psychometry is the technique where a psychic will touch an object and learn about its history from the impressions they pick up. Wow! All set. Touching various objects in Leeds Castle propelled Alice back into the past. The castle changed and became cold and bare. The carpet vanished, and there was a blazing fire piled with logs. Alice saw a tall woman pacing back and forth in the room apparently lost in concentration. In an instant, all returned to normal. Later research informed Alice that the room in which she had the vision had been the prison room of Joan of Navarre, 1368 to 1437. Wow! Hey! Wow! One second. Well, this is the last bit of it. Wow! Joan of Navarre was
was Henry V's stepmother who was imprisoned after being accused of plotting against the king. She was found innocent and released ultimately. This story comes from Alice Pollock's, officially Alice Wyckham Martin Pollock, autobiography portrait of my Victorian youth, natural and supernatural, published in 1971. Wow! Hey! Well, there you go! Wow! That's this episode of James Higgins, World of Strange Powers Over, episode three. Hope you enjoyed it uh, as much as I've enjoyed doing it. And uh, check out episode four next Wednesday. It'll come out every Wednesday. It's one of the 15 episodes in total. This is episode, uh, episode three. This is. So, please subscribe. Thank you.